Hello, hello, and welcome back to Coffee and Scream. I am your host, Jess, and with me, as always, is Piper. Hello. And Chris. Good evening. What's everybody up to today? Oh, not a lot. I got some laundry done today. That's always a plus. Pretty productive day, you know? Yes. I I did some laundry, too, and Mm. I took a nap. I did did lose the sleepy allegations war today, and I did take a nap, too. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Well, yeah, naps are, I don't know, I love them. It's like one of my hobbies. I just, like, have this weird thing where I'm like, I'm going to lose the game if I take a nap, so I don't try to take a nap. That's (laughs) winning. Like, you win if you take a nap. Like, I... I've always been a really good napper. Like my mom, like would tell me, like as like a, an infant, like I would be sleeping and like napping, and they would have to pinch me to make sure I was still alive. You were just napping. I was just sleeping. Like I was just a good sleeper always. Now, do you feel like you dream more when you nap? I hear crunching, Piper. Sorry, it's okay. It's cute. A crunch yeah. ASMR. Yeah. All right, she's yeah. off. She's off the show. She's fired. No, you're fine. Crunch, <laughs> crunch away. I don't give a shit. Um, I don't know if I dream more or less or whatever. Like, I usually remember my dreams, and they're usually very vivid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll dream about, like, like the other day, I dreamed about Whitney Houston. Like, what about her? Like, I had a dream that she had a twin sister. Oh, and her, really? But her twin sister wasn't as good of a singer, and they were going to pretend that, like, Whitney didn't die. And, like, it was, like, all this... Like, I don't know... Don't do Whitney like that. No. Nah. No. But, like, I don't know how my brain, like, conjures up these stories. It's very strange. And I don't know if I'm, like, is it, like, the drink I had before I went to bed? Is it... Did I eat something weird? Could be the taquitos, too. No, that's not every night. Give me nightmares. No, or is it like (laughs) melatonin? Like, if I take melatonin, it's like you're gonna have some fucked up dreams. Well, I don't know if I ever told you guys about this dream, Mm. but I had a dream where like the back room at our job like led to another like like like, led to a full uh, like apartment complex. What the fuck? Like we and like we all lived in the apartment complex. It's like like we like we lived together, and for some reason separate apartments. Yeah, like separate apartments. Units. Or it's like a threes company yeah. situation with me, you, and Chris. No, no, it was like a separate apartment complexes, but for some reason, my apartment was the only one that was infested with roaches. So I had Ooh, to Piper. stay at your apartment. And then there was like a weird thing where my apartment didn't get, like, couldn't get fixed. It couldn't be salvaged. And was I like, so then on, I had to like move in with you permanently. And was I okay with it? Or no, like, you were like completely like. I can't fucking believe this. Ah. Oh, no. See, I think you'd be a nice house guest. Like, I think you'd you'd clean up after yourself. I would be very quiet. She would leave crumbs on the counter. And then I'd get There would be always. crumbs in my bed. <laughs> bed it's crumbs. It's fine. I would, you know, I'd be like, I'd co-op you. I'd be like, you know, I'll take you for a couple weeks, and then it's Chris's turn. And then, yeah, well, and then, like, 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 uh, I'll, the just, custody. like I'll send you down the line to, like, every single staff member. I'm getting co-parented. But what did I tell you? I said, but for some it's reason, bad. But, with work like when you but start for dreaming some reason, about it our manager had like the had like the penthouse suite of on the top floor <laughs> of course he did and like and like there was a sneaking suspicion that like for some reason he was the problem of my roach infestation like he yeah. caught him. <laughs> like, he That's... sabotaged you like he's like i'm just like a couple of he's there. like i'm ready to fire her <laughs> i'll tell you what if he ever had the penthouse i would I'd find a way to, like, get him out of there. I'd be like, nah. like, I'm going to need that because I have Piper. Like, I'm going to, I have, you know, custody of Piper. I, I actually have it. a child now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would claim her, I would claim as dependent on my taxes. Yeah? And I would be like, yeah, yeah. I'd help you pay your taxes. Yeah. There you that. go. See? No more taxes. <laughs> no, I love Tab, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> and the three of us live together. Oh, my God. We need a laugh track. That would be the That's cleanest doorbell. house in the world, I feel. Cleanest? Yeah. Uh, what were we talking before? We were talking about horror. We were talking about the dreams. There was something I wanted to get to, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to stray too far from it. Talking about like dreams. dreams. But you like you said you don't really dream as much from naps, or like you remember your dreams because I feel like it's always when I go back to sleep from waking up mm-hmm. that I have like crazy dreams, and it's very. It's always been very similar. But I told you that dream. You know, remember that one dream where I was at like a party. And I saw through the kitchen window that fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Did, did I ever? Do you mind if I tell the story? Tell real quick? it. Okay. No, go ahead. So, like, I don't know where dreams came from, but I'm very interested to tell a story. Mm-hmm. So I had this dream, and I was at a party in like a classic, you know, like late '90s, maybe '90s style kitchen. 
I just remember Ooh. lots of like lots of wood colors and oranges and like an orange curtain perhaps on the window. Like lots you know, of people the, yelling "Bam, Bam!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I do. I used to love Admiral. He was my guy. Uh-huh. So I'm like I. I just feel like everyone that was there was familiar. I don't remember specific faces. It's rare that I do. And I was in this fucking kitchen and I was just chilling, being social, I guess. And I look off to the kitchen window mm-hmm. right above the sink. And the the house I'm guessing that I was in was at the end of a stretch of a road that led to like maybe some type of lagoon, mm-hmm. almost like Island Heights, if you're familiar. Okay. Or yeah. like uh, just anywhere where it's like on the water. Lagoons and stuff. Like a Friday the 13th lagoon? Yeah, something like that. And it, But it was no trees. It was very open, just like very uh, Edward Scissorhands style suburban area. Like cookie Ooh. cutter? Yeah, the like cookie cutter almost. Yeah, mm-hmm. like liminal space. Yeah, so it was, it was like a house at the end of this road. And it would just, after that was just water, right? It was just mm-hmm. water and then like maybe like a bridge or something. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. It was late at night or like even almost, almost dusk. Like, just enough light to see what I saw. And I remember looking through the kitchen window at the house, the only house that's left at the end of the road, and there was something as tall as the house peeking around the side of it at me. And it was... What? I remember seeing this thing in my dream, and I freaked the fuck out. Like, it was this tall, two-story figure, like, skinny, black, stick-like guy or thing... With like those like fluorescent eyes from deer at night, like to a, where I could see the light reflecting off of you know whether it's moonlight or if it's like the house that I'm like in, like a fucking skinwalker. Yeah, like a, like I something like that where it Ugh. definitely looked nocturnal, mm-hmm. and I remember freaking out, and no one at the party like saw what I saw, and I and ran. Did it stay like just staring it, at you? Or I just or like it. It's like ran away real quick. I don't remember it ever moving. It just it was. In that pose, like, peeking around the building, and I could see, like, its left side. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And I, I remember no one believed me at the party because that's when I immediately took my attention off of it. Like, I just remember seeing it, freaking out, and then running to the house. And I ran to the house, and the front door was wide open, and it was gone. And I went inside, and I just remember this, like, beautiful, long ballroom-style table. And it had, like, nice silverware and dinner all set up, and no one was there to mm-hmm. eat it. And then I woke up and I was like, what the fuck? And you've had this dream more than once? Not this one specifically, mm-hmm. but I do have oh, recurring the other dreams. One. Okay. Yeah, but I'll now, yeah, I don't want to. No, you should like you, draw the I was creepy gonna creature. Say, I, was, I have drawn it to show, just to show someone what the fuck I was talking about. Because really? I remember I, have, I woke yeah. up and I immediately wrote it down. Because you are like a fantastic artist. Like, what mm-hmm. the fuck did I just see? Like he drew like our cover. He's done so much stuff. Thank like, you. Thank you. Yes. Hope yes. you guys are enjoying the show, by the way. We should Every Friday, new episodes, Spotify. Follow us on Instagram. You know Apple Podcasts. You know what to do. Podcasts, you know you know. To do. Ooh, hear from everyone else. But do you want to drop your Instagram real quick? No, it's okay. We'll, we'll say that for the okay. end. We'll for the okay. End. Okay. Okay. No, but, but you, that, only give them a little bit at a time. Don't you know? Because sure, people sure. people overdo it. Let's give yeah, them. You know. That's fair yeah. enough. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you should drop for me to see because I've heard this. You've told me this story, mm-hmm. and I'm curious. You know. Yeah. What? Even if because uh, I could always draw something and then mm-hmm. be like, "This is what I was referencing." Episode five. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Because uh, people will be like, holy shit, well, that's what he was fucking talking about? No, huh? you should. Well, mm-hmm. like, she could post it on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've had, like, recurring dreams, and, like, it's horrifying because my recurring dreams are always of my grandparents' house, mm-hmm. like, where I grew up. Mm-hmm. But, in, and they're both past, you know, they've both died. Mm-hmm. But in my dream, it's like I'm in the house, and it's always nighttime, and I know I can't go outside because it's haunted outside. Mm. So I'm like, I need to stay in. I need to stay in. Like a little kid, like yeah, I like can't go going outside. to like the door and like seeing things out in the yard and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like I don't, I'm sure it means something, mm-hmm. but I dream about that house. Probably constantly. something to do with your inner child. In, like, I don't formative know. Formative years. Too. But like I always dream also because they had a swimming pool there, and I was in, in the summer. Me and my cousins were there from you know sun up to sundown. Swam every day together. Every every birthday party I had was a pool party there and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I dream about that swimming pool and it's always like, oh my god, I'm finally back here and I get to jump in the pool. I can't believe I get to jump in the pool. Like it's so it's very strange. Yeah, like even me, like in my aunt, we, they, we used to always go over there and swim mm-hmm. in the pool. And I was like, this is fucking badass. Yeah. And speaking of childhood, yeah, I don't know if you guys are familiar, mm-hmm. but Rib and I on Tuesday before the show we watched the Little Bear movie. Ooh. He sent me a Snapchat. Bro. 
Which, that was dark. It was a dark. I loved I it though. Seen it was, it. No, I used there to little, love Little Bear I was, as a kid. I was driving home and I was like, you know what? I've never fucking. You, you ever just like start thinking of shit like in digging through your brain and you're like, what haven't yeah. I thought of in a while? Yeah. And I just thought of Little Bear and I was like, oh my God, I haven't watched Little Bear since I was fucking little. No, he sent me like Should a I picture of the screen. Should I put that on my suggested movies list? It's like a, it's like a, I don't yeah, know, um, have you ever watched Little Bear? I haven't. Okay, so it's, it's oh. like, maybe it's like one of those things you kind of have to grow up with. It's like an older show. It's very like relaxing because I remember like. After, the music like, is badass. But like in the Ooh. summer, I remember as like a kid, like. Like that was like a nap time show for me. Like yeah. I would put it on and lay there and watch it. Or like if you're sick, like you oh, watch yeah. it. Yeah, Maury um, or like Price is Right or Little Bear. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's like your guys' is Arthur for me. Oh, oh Arthur. Well, I loved Arthur too. I love Arthur. Arthur. My my dad would come down Monday mornings when we were DW. Little, and we would and, and he would take us out to the, the diner <laughs> and then we'd mm-hmm. eat dinner. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then We'd come home and wait until my mom got home for work. And then after and like while we waited, Mm -hmm. we would watch an episode of Arthur and then my dad would go back home. Oh, I found out like two minutes ago that he was an aardvark. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. He was an aardvark. You didn't know that? What the fuck was was DW the same? Were they all ards? Yeah. That was your. So they have to be. They're so that's like your divorce. Who's that yellow guy that was a piece of shit? With the fucking PJ? Yellow guy. Bunny. Hey, he no, no, no. Is that what he sounded like? Because no, I, I don't even know. remember. He was like a bulldog. He was like a so. bulldog. Oh, is that what he was? Yeah. I think so. Okay. He's like, so he's that like... was like your di- divorce dad story? Because I... <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 no. Cause I have I have some like that too. Because like my parents have been divorced since I was probably about mm-hmm. two. But I remember swimming in that pool mm-hmm. and sitting on my grandparents' couch. Because like we lived mm-hmm. with them a lot. Mm-hmm. Like waiting for my dad to come get me on a Friday night mm-hmm. while I was watching Jaws three, mm-hmm. which like I, I stand by it. It's it's fantastic. Well, my like, dad. Don't... Yeah. Well, my parents did like um, every other weekend. Like yeah, I no, would mine go too. See my dad and um. And eventually, mine was like yeah. every weekend because I was like, I want to go. I want to go dad because <laughs> I had friends there. So I was like, yeah. well, we we could only ever stick to the every other weekend because uh, my dad lived like farther away. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we would like finish school on the Friday and then mm-hmm. like we'd come home and then we'd have to pack our bags mm-hmm. for the weekend and he'd come down, pick us up and then we'd go and then Sunday night he would drive us back down. Yes. And I have like so many memories from his apartment and everything like mm-hmm. that, like that little creepy two foot hallway to me and my sister's room and the that. goblin that lived yeah. in the closet. And then also the... The shower that would stop running when the people downstairs would start doing their dishes because for some reason <laughs> we shared a plumbing system with them. Yeah, and it was really annoying oh, when God. I had sh- like like had a fucking. You had to shit. And had- you had to wash your <laughs> dishes at the same time. Like, like it was really. You can't. You can't. I tried. <laughs> it was really annoying when I had like a head of shampoo and I was just like standing there in the shower waiting for the water to come back. Like <laughs> I was just like li- like a little wet dog, like just a little uh, wet dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but like, how awesome was it? like with like you got two christmases i did and two then, like birthdays oh yeah like uh yeah no i definitely like i liked it yeah i can't picture it any other way because yeah no i just can't yeah i yeah anywho i love, I love swimming i do <laughs> do you want to like pause this and like go play mermaids Dude, and then I, we'll come back uh, I, I have play, the I have uh, the water powers and the fire powers and and you two you are you can't the... have all of the powers. Well, yes, I can. <laughs> well, no, like I'm I'm still trying to decide what color tail I want. I am the mermaid and, like, queen. What, what my, I'll tell you what. what. What's what? I gotta figure out like my mermaid name and everything. Like there's Sparky. No, there's no Sparky. Spunky. <laughs> I was gonna say I I've always Sludge. wanted. Sludge. Yes, sl- Slimer. Um, no, Slimer. I, I, wanna, I just want. Yeah, I want to. I want to be just sludge. But tell sludge me, I'm telling you mermaid. what. I share every teenage girl's dream. When like, I totally want one of those little starfish earrings from Aquamarine. Oh my god! Yeah. I, I, when I saw, listen, I, when I saw, so watch that with my sister. Mm-hmm. I was like, God damn! I want a fucking little starfish guy. Like, what is like, she? Whispering I, sweet I nothing forget what she ear. says, but like, I used to watch it with like my sisters, and that movie's so cute. It's awesome. I would watch, I should watch like, that living again. in the yeah. water tower and shit. I yeah. would watch like H two O, and I would be like, I want to fucking go to that volcano and get mermaid powers now so you've bad. Seen Flipper, right? <laughs> was that with Elijah Wood? Yes. I know. I used to watch like actual Flipper growing up, like the nineteen sixties or seventies or oh, whatever. Oh, was a remake. Uh-huh. There was like a show Flipper, and like oh. I would I would watch that. 
What was the what was the movie with the sea lion and it was the girl from Napoleon Dynamite? Andre. Andre. Yes. I used to watch that. Great movie. Great movie. There was also a movie I forget what it was called and something like I don't know if it was Magic in the Water or something, but I saw in the theater and it's about like a Loch Ness monster type thing, like a girl, like oh, a family, yeah. like like the seahorse. The, no, it's, it's like the it, seahorse movie. No, but it's yeah. What, is I it don't called know. a seahorse in that? It's not a seahorse. It's oh, like a lo- uh, it's like a water horse. No, but it's not. Co- it's it's not called water horse. It's not called water horse because I remember I'm, hearing something about no, a water I swear. horse. But yeah, Andre. Actually, I, that's so. I can't believe. Oh my god, right? I just unlocked a memory. Andre, dude. Because I remember. Yeah. And I, you know, Andre is a big fan of Amityville Horror. Oh, is he? Yeah, oh, is I heard he? he's, he's big. He's big into the Amity. He likes true crime and ghost stories listener. all tied up into one. Do you mean this is a special episode then? Oh, my, I guess in a way. Okay, a little bit. It's is kind Andre of Andre watching right now. Andre the Seal, are you here? Are he's you got here a, with he's us. Got a water, one of those waterproof TVs. I don't know. I heard. <laughs> I don't know. I hear seals like it could bite your. It'll bite your fucking face yeah. off. Otter, he's got oh, an yeah. otter box. He's probably on. He's they're probably cute, on an yeah. iPhone by oh, now. Oh, sea otters are fucking vicious too. Oh, but they're so cute. Dude, they keep speaking of vicious. Don't you wanna, like, go just... watch our last episode, Sid Vicious and Nancy. Oh yes, yeah. La- I had learned a lot about last week's episode. I didn't know Sid was vicious. I didn't know there was a whole knife. Can involved. I tell the story? Can I please tell of the, course, the yeah, Instagram tell, tell story about this morning? Oh, because no, it was, it was cute. It was. It cute. was it's adorable, and like I told, so this yeah. morning, because Piper runs her. I, Insta- I need okay. to. I need to embrace my shame. <laughs> no, I no, see. I didn't I think even know. I didn't even think it was him. No, I think it's endearing, and like it made it made me laugh. So like, I think it's a good story. <laughs> I show. corrected my mistake. Okay, no. So this morning, Piper texts me, and she goes. Because the episode came out at midnight last night. She goes, I updated our Instagram with uh, pictures from the episode. And I was like, all right, cool. So I get on there and I look. And in the little carousel of pictures, the very first picture I see of Sid and Nancy is actually not Sid and Nancy. (laughs) It's Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker dressed up as Sid Nancy for Halloween. Well, they had me duped because they looked yeah. exactly like that. But I, like, I, I took a screenshot. I was like, yeah, I was like, it's I, great. I go, except that's not them. I was like, that's, you know, Courtney I and was, Travis. But I was, I was like, I all I said was like, I did like a laughing emoji. I'm like, I love you. Like, like it was cute. Like, yeah, like, yeah, if, was you cute. Look, really like cute. if you look at her message thread, like in all caps, I send back, what? No way. <laughs> yeah, I was, just, I was like, oh, Piper. Yeah, because I believe me when you when you showed it to me. No, I did you, a good job. You primed me for it because I you told me before you showed me. So, I should have just showed you. Yeah, because I d- wouldn't have known. It, it was, was actually it was really so, good at first glance. Dude. It was so funny. I, I was like. I, I was like mortified. I, I was like, okay, had, I'll delete the I was post like, and I'll fix it. No, I only had like a couple sips of coffee and I was like, what is she? I'm like, what? I'm like, is this, like, I had to like rub my eyes like a cartoon character. I'm like, am I seeing it right? But I had like, like to be woken honest, up an hour before. It was, I thought it was and so funny. I was funny. still sleep deprived. It was so funny. I feel like with you guys, your guys' humor, I feel like that's something you would do as a joke anyway, kind of thing. So that's it's, why like, I, it's not I too kinda, far off but base. But I didn't mean to. I yeah. was like, holy fucking shit. No, but I like, even like, I looked through, I was like, did she, was, did she do that like to try to get me? Is yeah. she trying to get me? So like I looked at like the hashtags to make sure like she wasn't fucking around, and I was like, mm. <laughs> what, if, what if one was hashtag haha joke lol or like haha fuck you Jess <laughs> yeah nice one <laughs> Jess yeah, hate club twenty twenty hashtag very stupid bitch <laughs> stupid fucking asshole <laughs> oh uh, got him <laughs> yeah oh my god it was so funny. Ugh. I have yeah, like, last, oh my god! I have so many drinks in front of me. My goodness! <laughs> trying yeah, to we manage. pull out all the stops. We we have the coffee. I always, we have the we have always the coffee. Bubbly. We always have something, you know, soda. We always have snacks. And this week I made um, some rum and cokes, mm-hmm. which went over better for me. Of course, and I have like you guys two are... sips of one. And yeah, it was well, good. I yeah. Yes, I was gonna say if everyone is, you know, get your wine. Mm-hmm. Get your drinks, take a piss, do your thing. Mm. Just because it's called coffee and scream, you yes. do not need feel. You do not. If you like tea, feel obligated. To if you like tea, coffee. get ja- yourself a cup of tea. Jasmine green tea is amazing. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm I'm not the boss of you. Yeah. I like turmeric tea with a little bit of sugar. So turmeric get yourself a good cup. For you too. That's what I And uh, mm-hmm. grab a blankie. Let's get cozy and let's uh, let's get into it. Uh, so tonight, we mm-hmm. do have a story for you that actually unfolds into kind of two separate stories, but oh, with a common yeah. theme. 
uh, there's a true crime portion and then there is a haunting portion. Mm -hmm. And Piper, why don't you tell us what went down at the Amityville house? All right. So our story starts with the DeFeo family, which consisted of father Ronald and mother Louise. Together, they had five children, Ronald Jr., Dawn, Allison, Mark, and John. To the outside world, the DeFeos were happy together. They lived in an affluent part of Long Island, New York, and the house they lived in was a Dutch colonial-style home at 112 Ocean Avenue in Amityville, New York. This home had a swimming pool and a nearby boat dock. On the walls inside of the home, portraits of the family adorned them. The DeFeos were known as kind and caring people. Like mm -hmm. one time, the whole family had befriended their neighbor, Catherine O'Reilly, after her husband passed away. Mm -hmm. But, like with every true crime story, <laughs> it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Yeah, no, no, it's not. It, it's like the, it's like the, they were happy. Yeah, when Until. Is, when, is, <laughs> when does Until Ryan Reynolds come weren't. in? Yeah, literally. Oh, so... Yeah, that's the, that's the remake. <laughs> yeah. So, Ronald Sr. had been running an auto dealership, but unfortunately, the income was not enough to satiate the lavish, lavish lifestyle excuse me, of the DeFeos. Due, due to this, most of the wealth they had originated was from Louise's father, Michael Brigante, who purchased the Amityville property for them. Robert, uh, Ronald Sr., excuse me, sorry, a.k.a. Big Ronnie, was known to be a violent and abusive man who targeted most of his anger and outbursts onto the eldest DeFeo child, Ronald Jr., a.k.a. Butch, and for the sake of difference and for the lack of confusion from this point on in the story, mm -hmm. I will be referring to the son as Butch and the father as Ronald, just so that there's that differentiation no big ronnie little and, ronnie situation yes, yes. i got you um, big Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> um so as butch reached closer and closer to adulthood finding common ground with his father seemed more like fantasy than reality in school butch was also bullied for his weight children referred to him as pork chop and the blob oh i call my cat pork chop not you a, do. I do. But it's probably endearing. Oh, he's a chunky. Yeah. I love him. But like these kids were like, that's me to her child. <laughs> that's me. Like, like, but honestly, uh, I don't really feel too bad for him after well, what he ends up doing. Well, yeah. We'll get to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. When he reached his teen years, he had lost the weight, but turned to drugs and alcohol to cope. These addictions also contrib contributed to his weight loss. Butch's relationship with his father was still tumultuous, and there was even a time where Butch pulled a gun on Ronald Sr. Hmm. Ronald had given his son a job at the dealership, but Butch was an unreliable worker whose attendance was spotty, and he left work early whenever he so desired. Kind of sounds like my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Butch spent most of his time indulging in his addictions, getting into fights, and arguing with his parents. Despite his violent and rebellious track record, though, nobody would suspect that Butch would go on to slaughter his family. Yeah. So, okay, so Butch is the son. Yes. And Ronald Sr. is Mr. S Mr. Sr., Mr. Man, Mr. Mr. Dad. Dad. Right? Yes. Yeah. And Big Butch, Butch was the... the would you say rebellious teenager who didn't want to be told what to do? No, he's like the firstborn son, probably just yeah. Like, but you said he was also like kind of flippant at work. He wouldn't he would show yeah. up when he pleased. Kind of, yeah. Was it work or was it at home? At work. At work. Like at work. He, I guess he would work for his dad, but yeah, like, he wasn't the so, most reliable. He kind of just came and went. And, mm -hmm. and what, what, like, was one to assume that he was intercepted essentially by some kind of negative spirit, and it perhaps aided in his depression or shaped him maybe he was an outcast it's as a result. funny you nice should say foreshadowing. that really oh because nice i get a sense for these kind of things I, I believe me i don't know much i've only seen the movies we'll get to that but okay. nice foreshadowing okay. okay so on november 13th 1974 uh which fun fact my mom was born in 1974 uh mm. shout out mom uh <laughs> shouts out, shouts yeah out. 
Uh, when Butch was only 23, Butch and Ronald Sr.'s fighting would end as when they were asleep, Butch fatally shot his father and mother in the head. The gun used to kill them was a .35 caliber Marlin rifle. And after he shot his parents, Butch shot his siblings who were sleeping in their respective rooms. This was done with the same rifle. When they died, Dawn was 18, Allison was 13, Mark was 12, and John was only 9. Oh, God. Jesus. And they have, like, those pictures online. Like, it's yeah. pretty brutal. Oh, let's, yeah. Let's take a look at those. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're there. You can yeah. well, easily right now, see them all. For the audio mm. listeners, um, I'm well, currently... No, no, no. Okay, I'll, no, I'll no, say it. I'll save it. it. Save it. Well, I'm looking at some subject material. And, yes. Uh, oh, you wait. Ooh, you Ooh. wait. Oh, Ooh, you buckle up. fucking wait, Buster. Oh, you Buster. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, so okay. after the murders, Butch had showered, got dressed, and put together any evidence he could find that would lead to his incrimination and incarceration. On his way to work, Butch discarded of all the evidence, including the Marlin rifle, into a storm drain. After all of this was said and done, he went about his day like nothing had ever happened. Just like every other killer in every fucking story. Yeah, right? It's, right. it's a standard <laughs> procedure. Oh, yeah. When, when Butch showed up for work, he lied and told his co-workers that he had no idea where Ronald Sr. was when Ronald didn't make it to work that day. Butch even went as far to call his father on the phone later on that day. Butch had left work early again to hang out with his friends, and he had even made it a point to tell them that he had difficulty contacting any of his family that day. Post-murder. Yeah, like after he murdered Like his trying family. to sell it almost in a way? Yeah, like trying to feign, like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, like, like where could they possibly be? Like, like what? I, like, I've been trying to talk to them all day, but they haven't, like, reached their phone yeah, like, and everything. What's your inference? Like, do you think that's denial? Or do you feel like that's, I feel that's like, like, a covering? Like, he's aware of what he's done? I feel like he's very aware because um, in the trial, he was found to be sane uh, during the really? uh, murders. But I'll talk about that more. Yeah. Um, towards the end of my segment. Um, but, uh, put a pin in it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm so, God. I'm curious. But, I'm curious. But, um, <laughs> but he, but I feel like it was feigning like oblivion to the whole situation. Like, because he does like try to like discover them. Um, yeah, he like does that. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, which is actually a good segue because then he got home and, quote, discovered, unquote, his family dead in the house. And so he ran to a nearby bar and screamed for help. He told the patrons that he told the patrons there that someone had come in and shot his family. So the bar goers had decided to go with Butch back to Ocean Avenue. There, everyone was greeted with a brutal scene. All DeFeo family members were found face down in bed with both parents having two gunshot wounds each and each of the siblings only having one. Double tap? Mm Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. When the police showed up and interviewed Butch, who appeared to be in shock, Butch said he suspected his family to be mob targets. The police took Butch to the station for his own protection, but the police's belief of Butch's story would be short-lived when they found out that things just didn't line up. Mm-hmm. They were like, this bitch is fishy. They're like, bro, your hair's everywhere. Fishier than a can of tuna. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Um, so for example, uh, the mob hitman who Butch accused wasn't even in the state at the time, which I find comical. Um, oh yeah. And by the way, what year is this again? Uh, 1974. Okay, thank you. Um, you're welcome. Uh, and the autopsy results of the DeFeos showed that each of them were shot in the early morning. Though Butch was at work and with friends throughout the day, this fact didn't do him any favors as Butch would have been home in the early morning. Hmm. No, no, no. He's already no, fucking no, no. off. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> then, the next day, Butch confessed to the crime and told the police, once I started, I just couldn't stop. It went so fast. In October of 1975, Butch's criminal trial was set to take place. 
It captured the attention of the media for two reasons, the brutality of the crime and the still unanswered questions about the circumstances of the murder. During the trial, Butch's lawyer said that he was insane and was only acting as a result of demonic voices that plagued Butch's head. In November, Butch was found guilty of six counts of second degree murder and was sentenced to six consecutive sentences of 25 years to life in prison. So uh, I'm going to nerd out for a little bit with like with like being in law classes and everything. Mm -hmm. So consecutive sentences mean that they take place after one another. So after like that, the first 25 years is up, Mm -hmm. then it'll be another 25 years, 25 years. And and then so on. Right. So 125 years. Yes. Right. Is that no. For how many? 150 years. Uh Yeah. Fuck me because I can't do because sometimes like, yeah you're not you're not getting it. it's, it's yeah because okay. okay. sometimes like judges will also like sentence based on the quality of life for the person being like mm-hmm. on trial and everything so like um they'll sometimes like combine this the uh sentences mm-hmm. so it's like might as well yeah so it's like twenty five years to life and there's like two people that got murdered then like fifty years in prison no parole I, like there I, you go I like I do wonder like what. The purpose of, and, you know, if someone can answer this, then that's, you know, I appreciate that. What is the purpose of giving someone 150 years versus telling them you're just not getting out? Mm -hmm. Is it like a psychological thing? Like, what is the purpose behind that kind of um, sentence? Um, Like, a sentence that clearly no one is probably, unless you're like a monk so the and you co- meditate every fucking day. So the consecutive sentences are more for like moral reasons. So that each, so like in the case of like serial killers, like every family that was affected feels oh, okay. like they have That's justice. Fair. So like it's a just profile. Like, it almost yeah. is profiled. So it's like so it's more of like I'm gonna make so this ju- judge is like I'm gonna make sure every family member, every family member, every family that was affected by this person and their yeah. actions gets the justice that they feel is right and mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, because, like, life um, might be 30 years and then you croak. Mm-hmm. But if you say 150 fucking years, that's yeah. sa- that does sound, yeah, yeah it's and terrible. Also, and also that scares the shit out of the person that's, like, getting... Yeah, because they're no, they know they're right. not going to fucking... No amount, no amount of push-ups is going to mm-hmm. save you from being 150 plus, you know? And that's mm-hmm. crazy. So what year was he convicted again of this and... and what year did he die? Did he he died in prison? Right, I'm guessing. Um, yes. Um, so he was sentenced to the Sullivan Correctional Facility, right? I believe. And so. he died. Uh, when? Um, uh, actually, not that long ago. If you really? See, yeah. yeah. He died. He died March twelfth, twenty twenty one, and he wow. was sixty nine. Uh, in Albany, New York. Um. Yeah. Which isn't even that old. And like, yeah. What? Like, how many years did he serve? Like forty he, years? From, or not forty years? Right? Mm-hmm. No, probably forty years. Right? He was like well since nineteen seventy four to twenty twenty one. That's yeah. crazy. So long years. Yeah. Fucking long time. Um. So despite the killer now being behind bars, those unanswered questions were still burning to become answered. Authorities had no idea how all six could die without struggle, and the authorities were also confused over the fact that the neighbors didn't report sounds of gunfire, despite the fact that Butch didn't use a gun silencer. Yeah, and that's what I was going to ask, too. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to derail it, but I was like, how did the children not wake up from these? Because mm-hmm. I mean, they're all in their beds, and like they're all like s- like sleeping on their stomachs, so like mm-hmm. how? Yeah, but the loudest thing in that house ever mm-hmm. was probably gunfire. Mm-hmm. How do you not like bolt like awake? Like, you like, hear that's that. My, that's my thing. It's like... That's probably, like, not even saying that it would naturally wake everyone mm-hmm. up, but it's, like, that's probably a sound, unless they were fucking party animals. I can't imagine well, that that was, like, a normal, yeah. like, even thunder sometimes is crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I've, like, I've even seen, like, I think one of the kids or something was not, like, the like the position of their body made it seem like they did wake up. Mm-hmm. And they, like, they were about to they get didn't, up. They didn't have a chance to really to react. Yeah. Like, I guess maybe when he came into the room, because a lot of the kids were, like, doubled up in their bedrooms. Uh-huh. Um, and they one, were also probably, like, stirring throughout throughout the whole thing. Like, I don't, Or in just fear. Like, like maybe the, they just stayed still. Have you ever fired a gun? No, I haven't. But, like, I've watched YouTube videos of people firing guns. I and have. it is loud. I have. Even, it is yeah. loud. Even Especially with, like, in a closed space. Even with headphones on, like, mm-hmm. like the noise-canceling things, mm-hmm. like, it is still, like... And you would you would not you ever fire a potato gun? Actually, yes, I have. No shit, really? Yeah, I, right, I used to. That, yeah. 
I used okay. and I am such a, <laughs> no, and I am such mm. a deep sleeper that uh, but like even I feel like I would wake up from hearing gunshots. But like think about this. I'm too. a deep sleeper too, but yeah. like that it's Some, like you cannot it's sleep through that, that fucking loud. But people sometimes yeah. react to things different ways. Like what if they were just uh, so afraid that they pretty like much play bed, dead, like pop, play possum. Like, like, like uh, if I pretend I'm asleep, like uh, whatever is going uh, just on, leave, they it'll leave go. me alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. T-Rex or Like some out of shit. sight, out of mind. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, fucking... No, that, I, that's even like... Because oh, actually, that that's one of the things that we learned, oh, that, like an exercise that me and my therapist did. Like we, when we were checking like emotions and how like heat temperatures react to bodies and everything um when your body heats up red those areas in your body they're frozen because the because the graph it's like a fight or flight and Mm. when you free and you when you get so warm in a section of the body it's either you start going like you start start running or or you freeze up yeah and you're stuck there and you're like rooted to the spot you can't move and some people act differently right under pressure right and shit. yeah you don't i guess if you're not especially uh, as a child what the fuck is you don't yeah do? you don't know what you're gonna do right in that no. situation um so uh yeah so um butch claimed to have drugged his family's dinner but enough time would have passed between dinner and their deaths for those drugs to be ineffective so, um, I didn't even consider that. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe the kids, I guess, like a child, if you give them, if you give everyone the same dose, I mean, the parents yeah. are going to be fine and then yeah. the kids are going to be worse off. Yeah. I assume I don't know. based on size, you know, probably, um, unfortunately, kind of like those drinks you made earlier, just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. Okay? No, they were delicious. Thank I'm you. a Thank tank. You. No, right. I loved it. I had two little sips. And two tiny that little sips. That's, a, that's enough. I was just like, okay. <laughs> and then I took over her cup. Yes. <laughs> she, she, I, I willingly gave over my glass. It was delicious. Mm, delicious. I'm glad you enjoy. Well, Thank mine you. had cherry Coke. Theirs had regular Coke. It was cherry Coke, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. yeah, the cherry Coke makes a difference. I'll tell you what. I just opened up last week's Coke before I came here. <laughs> Because I was, I was playing guitar and I was like, you know what? I kind of want something with bubbles, but I can't drink because I got to drive and come here and do the sure. show. So I was like, you know what? I was drinking it out of a fucking wine glass. Ooh. Oh, you so fancy. Coke out of a wine glass. You ever hear about it? Ooh. Yeah. Right. I, I used to drink champagne out of like a... Not champagne, a shoe? To, no, ginger ale out of like a champagne cup, like a champagne glass as like a child. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, that was extra. Yeah. You get the Shirley Temple with no alcohol in it, thinking you're mm-hmm. badass. Yeah. You want to know who else also probably did that? What? The DeFeo family. Ooh, oh, Nick segue. So unfortunately, Butch's motive is still unknown to this day. Sure, he had issues with his father, but why go after his other family members? Butch's motive continued to be muddied with the stories that he would tell other inmates in prison, and the public ran rampant with theories that ranged from a psychotic break to Butch desiring his father's life insurance money or Mm. his prior drug use playing a role in the murders. But despite the tragedy that took place on 112 Ocean Avenue, in December of 1975, the Lutz family moved in. Oh boy, here we go. Okay. And now into the spooky. Now, this isn't the first instance of an issue, right? At this house? Well, Butch claimed that he did hear voices and stuff, and that kind of was a little bit of the catalyst for, you know, why he acted the way he did. Mm hmm. Um, but I guess the trial and the jury was like, yeah, you're kind of, you're full of shit. So let's see here. So just 13 months after the brutal uh, murders of the DeFeo family at the hands of their son, Ronald Jr., Butch, the Lutz family moved into the house at 112 Ocean Avenue on December 18th, 1975. Ooh. And because of the gruesome crime that took place there, the Lutz family, they were able to get the home for just $80,000. Wow. Which is like, this is 1975. Okay. So like, I didn't convert that actually into today's money. I should have. I can find that out right now. um, But like the house, like it had like a little boat dock and it had, you know, it was on water and... um, I couldn't. I Which couldn't is even... probably such a beautiful view too. By the oh, way, oh for sure. But like, would you 
I don't know. Yeah, like I, but they like, got I it, wouldn't want to. They have got a it for super view, cheap, but also be tortured by ghosts. But also, like <laughs> in that included in that price, they got a lot of the DeFeo family's furniture, which was still in the house. Mm-hmm. So, like, you imagine that? Like, you're like, yeah, you know what? Just, let's just keep that couch. It, it, it's What's okay. What's this mysterious brown stain on the couch? Yeah, yeah. Like, mm, I would just like I'm. A little bit like kind of a hippie, so I'd be like, uh, it probably contains too like, much bad energy. Yeah, like bad juju. Get yeah. it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, I, no. I, no, like not. But I'd be like, let's start fresh. I wouldn't get it. I wouldn't get it out because of like bad energy or anything. Because like the the way I was raised, like it forced me into a very logical mindset. Honestly, so like mm-hmm. therefore, I feel like I'd be more of like. Uh, let's get this furniture out of here out of respect for the people that were slaughtered in their sleep like <laughs> yeah like they like they got like a lot of their stuff so. like let's have our own shit <laughs> and if you guys were curious yeah if if this is correct inflation calculator yeah um in 19 you said 76 75 75 right so i'm guessing it's similar right i'm well, sure old, it old can't be too different because um what i'm looking at is pretty extraordinary so if eighty thousand dollars was today, it's, mm-hmm. it says approximately four hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars. <laughs> Which, if you see, too no, far it, no, off but if you see nowadays, here. you gotta if love you the see that prices. house, like the you know, like the it's real beautiful. estate, like it's it's beautiful, it's big. There's like a lot of you know, like amenities, like the the mm-hmm. boat ramp and the boat and the boat yeah. house and all and this it's on stuff. The water, so four you know. oh, like four k, like four hundred k is it's really reasonable because nowadays like you try to try finding like a like a little buy level for you know less than 500 like you're not gonna like when i um was still talking to my two friends and everything we tried to even like look at houses to rent and for three people to rent a house it was insane you're better off in a fridge box yeah. I was like, we could fucking book a hotel room for a week. Start looking for haunted places. It would be the with, same with, fucking you know, price. Maybe, you know, maybe look for houses where like bad crimes have taken place and just <laughs> really just turn it around. They just warn you, don't peel the wallpaper. So don't, just don't. just make maybe sure. Maybe hire the real estate agent that sold the Lutz family the like, DeFeo's mm-hmm. home. Like every week, They'll just make sure you're deal. like make sure you're saging the property too. Well, like Oh yeah. Well, you know yeah, well also let's see here. All right. So the real estate broker, she uh or he actually, I don't remember who it was. They disclosed the very recent murders of the DeFeo family to the Lutzes and asked if it was a problem, and they said no. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, no. Uh, it's not gonna happen. It's not good for business. Well, I don't. Like, like what's the well, like, worst how would, that could happen? But like, <laughs> they probably really, really wanted the house. It was a great price, and like, you know what? We'll make it work. Mm-hmm. So it was, you know, supposed to be the start of their dream home. And, you know, they had a gorgeous house with like a swimming pool and a boathouse. And the house was located on a canal and it was going to be a new beginning for the family. Uh-huh. And Kathy and George Lutz, they were married in July of 1975. Mm-hmm. And George became a stepfather to Kathy's three children from a previous marriage. There was Daniel, who was nine. Mm-hmm. Christopher, who was seven. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, seven. Ooh. 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 And Melissa, Melissa, who was five. Melissa's my aunt's name. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Butch is what we call my grandfather. Oof. Ugh, rough story. Butch. Okay. Butch. Well, they is also. Is Butch in fucking Home Alone? Isn't it no. Butch? Who's the, who's the brother's name? Buzz. Buzz. That's what it is. Your girlfriend. I don't know. <laughs> Woof. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they also had a dog Butch. named Harry. Anyone have any relatives named Harry? Mm, uh, no. no. Uh, well, my little brother's middle name is Harold. So. Wait. <laughs> what? I have an I have a, co- a character that I made for one of my crime fiction novels, Harry? and his middle name is Harry. Maybe you fucking dreamt of a Harold. Is it Harold, Harold or is it Harry? It's just Harry. Well, a Harry is short with for an Harold. I? Harry was an I. <laughs> what the why? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> why did you think I'm, that? I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Moving on. Yeah. Okay. And after learning of the horrible history of the house, a friend of George's told the Lutzes that they should have it blessed by a priest, you know, just in case. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> well, they arranged to have the house blessed while they unpacked their things on December 18th. 
Mm -hmm. And right off the bat, things started to happen. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. So as soon as the priest flicked the very first drop of holy water, he heard a deep voice tell him to get out. Ooh. Do you remember that from the movie? Like, yes. Yeah, that was scary. I don't like that. Mm-mm. Get out, bitch. This is my house. I mean, I, I would definitely... <laughs> hey, man. I'd be like, no, hey. I'm, I'm gone. I'm already gone. I'm out. Like, don't Dude. worry. Remember fucking, yeah, fuck this shit. That, that ghost is like, um, excuse me, what the actual fuck are you doing in my head? But, but like, was that guy, like, was that... He probably wasn't used to that, right? They, that was, I don't know if they... When, if that's, like, the normal thing for priests to, like, hear that. Like, I... There would have been a just shaped hole in the wall because I would have just yeah, fucking split. like a running a running pose <laughs> hole in the fucking wall. Yeah, and just a, like a, and like a cloud shaped like, like you. Yeah, yeah, like a clay. Yeah. Like and yeah, and I would have forest gumped it like down the fucking street, like that, gone, I, run, gone. I imagine run, losing Jesse, my shoes. Run. <laughs> yeah, like running out of your fucking shoes. Yeah. Kneel the chest, kneel the, or knees the chest, knees the chest, knees the chest. I'd be, dude. Yeah, no. I would be gone. Yeah, not for me. I couldn't even I look at the like, pictures before. I was like, I feel it like it gives, it's like, ugh. I feel like I wouldn't run. I'd just be like, eh. Well, get this. <laughs> okay. Uh, dude. And I don't know, I don't know his reasons why he did this, but the priest decided to keep that creepy experience to himself and not tell the Lutzes what he heard. Hmm. Uh, stand up guy, right? Yeah, he's like, you know, my, like, like mm. it was probably if it if he really maybe it probably was, like bothered him. He's like, how do I yeah. tell he him? Pro- he probably thought he was losing his mind. Mm-hmm. It was probably so obviously something he heard. <clears throat> yeah, that he's like, a du- like even though it would have affirmed what they were thinking, that's the whole reason why he came there in the first place. Mm-hmm. It's weird that it, it's like it was too extreme to him. If like, so. Where he yeah. didn't even, it was like, I can't even, even though they want me here because they've been experiencing mm-hmm. something or just to be safe, mm-hmm. you can't even tell them. And like, he's that's like, insane. And he's like a priest too. So he's probably used to feeling protected by his religion and, that and, and his God. Shit his pants. So it probably struck a lot of fear into him, to yeah, be honest. Like, yeah. Because yeah. when you have a faith that strong to where you're willing to go into a profession that involves your religion, like... You're very faithful in your religion. You're very strong and like. He probably felt like he was on his own in that it. moment, though. Think right. about that. Right. Like, he the probably fact that he didn't say like, anything. He probably like, felt like God abandoned him or something. He's probably like, dude, what are you doing to like, me? No, like, no, I don't know. <laughs> I would have like immediately be like, guys. Uh, dude, God, pl- help me out here. Like, no, uh, like, no you get out. <laughs> like, what do you mean, get out? God, God. Yeah, like it's like, so, he's like fighting with his right, brother like, in the back. Like, so, okay, yeah, 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 okay, so I, I guess, you know, he let it marinate for a while. And uh, he began just for a beat. And uh, he decided to call Kathy Lutz on December 24th, 1975. Mm. And he told her. Christmas Eve. He told her to stay out of the second floor where he heard the voice. He's like, I can't, I can't let you go up there. Like, please, just don't. Just don't. Yeah. Just, just, yeah, no. yeah. And this is where the bedroom of Mark and John Matthew DeFeo used to be. And Kathy was planning on using it as a sewing room. And, like, I get it. I'm a crafty gal, too. Yeah. Like, I had mm-hmm. a sewing room. Sewing or like room. Like, a crochet room or, you know, whatever. Sounds Computer nice room. and relaxing. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, I, would, I was just I would, about to get my own space. You're I would have that it. room to collect my hordes of notebooks because I am a disgusting writer. <laughs> 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 They just said they just spent eighty grand and they can't even go upstairs. No, like, like she piss like me off. I'd be like, I'm going. Yeah, like and so she was. Uh, she actually never heard the full extent of that conversation because like the phone like it like cut out. Like there was like mm-hmm. you know there's poor reception. Mm-hmm. Or was it? Or was, or was it? it the ghost? Because <laughs> yeah, I've heard they like to mess with stuff with the um you know the electronics and whatnot. They were like. They're like technology after my time. Ew. Fuck you. Yeah. yeah no. They're still using a track. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, after that visit and like all that, you know, the priest he actually developed a fever and sores and stigmata. Mm. Yeah. Really? And Jesus markings. Like he had like the markings on his hands and his feet and all that. Because like, I've seen stigmata. Yeah. Have you seen that movie? Um. No. It's pretty. It's almost like blessed a child. You ever see that? No. Okay. Well. Okay. You and your religion. Well, hopefully someone out there knows what I'm talking about. I'm sure they do. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they do. And to George and Kathy, everything was going great, and they didn't notice any paranormal activity in the beginning. 
So I'm like, yeah, that guy's probably full of shit. Like, mm. it's, it's not so bad. We're fine. Yeah. And it wasn't too long after that they began to experience doors being ripped off the hinges, mm. cabinet doors slamming shut, and a slime oozing in multiple places in the house. Yeah, I've heard that, right? Did yeah. They what color the was movie? the slime? I don't know. <laughs> Just fucking slime colored. I feel like in... <laughs> I don't... Uh, like That's snot. Not, like, no they, matter what color, it's not good. Are they? True. Yeah, yeah. I'd are like, they implying that it's like an ectoplasmic kind of secretion, or would you say it's I don't just? Know. Imagine if like like is it trying to create like is I it trying think, to garner an environment where it can thrive? Like maybe. is it trying to create like a some kind of crazy spirit um, corner? No, no. Imagine if slime was like mood rings for ghosts. Like you could tell how they're feeling based yeah, on the slime like color. The green slime is like, oh, they're they're cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, they watch Nickelodeon. Or like the red slime is like they yeah, have it's like, like you get upstairs. bad problems. Yeah, go yeah. Uh-huh. Go to the sewing room. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And uh, they also reported uh, bad smells that would come and go like randomly, which I've heard like ghosts and demons and all this stuff. They smell like shit. Like they smell like rotting meat. And like burnt, like like it's like just like it smells shit. bad, they like garbage, smell like poopy. Yeah, like and um, the family they would also wake up at three fifteen almost every single day, which is Oof. the time three fifteen a.m. three fifteen a.m. every day, which is I think the time that Butch mm-hmm. did his business. And now that I'm thinking yeah. about it, like The Conjuring took a lot of inspiration mm-hmm. from that because they would wake up at the same time wouldn't they as well yeah or was that based on a separate well that's similar it's, it's a similar but different like they both involve the warrens okay and oh really yeah maybe those warrens too yes they really? went there after i feel yeah. like interesting mm-hmm. i didn't know about after, that they went there after the lutz family was there and everything and yeah you think i feel like you're gonna uh like get this reference more than jess but uh at 3.15 a.m., the ghosts get a little quirky at night. It sounds familiar. I don't know. Where's it from? The audio of the FNAF dude from Phone Guy. <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. I see, I just saw the, Did you see the trailer for the movie? Yeah. Okay. It looks, but, yeah, it looks cool. But do uh, but you think James Wan's going to do an Amityville adaptation? Mm. Oh, my God. Out of all people. I mean, he's not terrible. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we're going. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Um... Let's see. George claimed that he heard the children's bed slamming up and down on the floor, but he couldn't do anything because an invisible force was paralyzing him. Like he just, I don't know. He couldn't stop it. Um, And after just 28 days, the Lutzes fled the home with just the clothes on their backs and never returned to the house on Ocean Avenue. The house was investigated by, you know, many paranormal groups and there is a famous photo that exists of what appears to be a child resembling John Matthew DeFeo peering out a doorway. And we will definitely be putting that picture on Instagram. Oh, it is. Yeah. And do you want to describe? I'll make to sure the it's not a celebrity seeing? remake this time. Please. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> fucking funny. That's actually really funny. Okay, so you know it's funny because in the in one of the Conjuring's, like they. They like you know how every movie like it starts off like show like a different case first and then they get into the movie. Yeah, of course. Well, it's I like think prime. in the second movie they did a thing where like it was uh they were doing a seance in the Amityville house mm-hmm. and like this famous picture was recreated. Really, I don't think I saw that. Hmm. I don't okay. actually know. Would you say the Connery, Connery? Conjuring two? two. I see. That's like for some. Well, reason, they talk about I'm like the Enfield that. poltergeist. Yeah. It's, really. Yeah. They yeah they recreated it. So you um, want to describe to the so audience? So this is, it's a black and white photo and you can see like the banister of the stairs and mm-hmm. to the left hand side, like peering out of a doorway is what looks to be a little boy with like glowing eyes. Mm-hmm. And if you see a picture of the DeFeo children, you know, John Matthew, it definitely looks like it's him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they both have like a very like buttony like upturned nose and like. Yeah. And like that same little swoopy haircut. And like the mm-hmm. lips are like very thin. And like he looks yeah. like he th- thin lips, like the ghost. Mm-hmm. Like he looks very like confused. Like who's mm-hmm. here? Like what's going yeah. on? Like he yeah, yeah. has no idea. Mm-hmm. That. See, I don't even know if I see like a form through the banisters. It almost. But looks look like at he's the other pajamas. pictures. But yeah. look at the other pictures. Like the, the one like where the red circle that you love so much. Top. I love that no, red circle. Top, top, top above it. This one. No, go. No the greenish one. This one. That yeah, one. That one. Okay. Like from far away. How fucking spooky oh. is that? Yeah. Have you guys ever seen Skinamarink? 
And I know exactly what I'm talking the about. The first time I was exposed to this photo was when I was really little on those stupid top 10 ghost sighting videos Ew. on YouTube. And it fucked me up as a kid. Oh, I fucked love me up. that shit like yeah, that. It looks to be like. A, now I look at it and I'm like, hey, hey. But. Like, it's like, the, uh, what, what year would you say this is like a 70s era? Maybe like this was built in like the 40s or mm-hmm. 50s style house. Mm-hmm. It's a rigid square-like spiral uh-huh. banister staircase and at the foot mm-hmm. of it yeah is a little and boy. also i feel like what freaks like me out the most too about the picture is the lack of like decor in the yeah, walls it's, well, it's like an empty house it's no yeah, like there's because it, it, it doesn't feel like it's lived in at all like it doesn't no. feel like there's like he just wanders the place alone yeah, like now was oh, was, this, uh-huh. was this picture taken like when they were trying to let's say resell the house? This picture Probably. I think was taken when the Warrens were there, mm-hmm. and they were just you know snapping a whole bunch of pictures and stuff to see what was going on there because the Warrens went there after the Lutz family left. But it wasn't lived in at see, the time. N- I no, it so wasn't. hence the no furniture, no decor, yeah. and that wasn't noticed mm-hmm. until the film was developed. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't see anything. That's the worst part. Waiting. Yeah, but I feel like, but I feel like, because I mentioned liminal spaces before, but it's like that, like, feeling of liminality, like, it's not, like, a place that you would spend most of your time, especially because it's a hallway Mm. to stairs, it's a transition area. Oh, I get what you're saying. So it's like a place where you're, like... Ick, icky because you're not, like, spending time there, you're not comfortable there. It's only a walkthrough. Yeah. Like a flyover state. Yeah. Yeah. It's a because, high traffic area, just like yeah. in and out. Yeah, it's like yeah, a it's school like, hallway. Like, you're not spending right. time in the school hallway. You're using the hallways to get to class. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... Unless there's a fight, then I'm there all day. So, the Lutz family, <laughs> after they left, you know, they ended up staying with relatives, and they went on, you know, numerous talk shows and all this stuff to talk about their experiences, and there's books written, you know, by them and, you know, about them, and movies and mm-hmm. all this stuff and a lot of people try to come out and say that you know it was a hoax and there was nothing going on there mm-hmm. but George and Kathy never ever ever changed their story they never took it back or anything and um, let's see here uh, George and Kathy they divorced in the late 1980s and Kathy died of emphysema in 2004 mm-hmm. and George died of heart disease in 2006 now the house has changed hands you know a few times Mm -hmm. since and there's Mm -hmm. been no further hauntings reported like the current owners they don't i don't know if they're very public but they like no one else has reported anything you know at all and Mm -hmm. out of the kids the let's kids i don't couldn't really see anything about melissa but danny believes the story you know Mm -hmm. that his family everything they experienced but christopher does not Mm-hmm. And Danny, actually, there is a documentary called My Amityville Horror that he made. Um, just talking about growing up in the house, but, like, he, they were only there for 28 days. Mm-hmm. But it definitely, you could tell it took its toll on him, like, mentally and And did they that. withhold that from it, like, the kids? Or the kids? No, the kids, the kids, I think they, too. I think the kids knew. Like, they're, like, yeah. Mm, yeah, I, like, I sorry, like, like we have to leave everything. We have to leave right now. Like because we were talking about this back in the Myrtle's Plantation episode, where like children are a lot more susceptible to like ghost activity and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like in a house that is alleged to have that much activity, I feel like it's almost impossible for the kids to not experience it. Well, like you've seen like the movies, especially and stuff like if that. there's like other little kid ghosts where it's just well, like, yeah. oh, so, I, I, yeah. I have a friend now. Yes, like, well, like the remake, like the one with like Ryan Reynolds and stuff like that. Like it shows like the little girl playing with mm-hmm. the dead little girl, yeah. like the ghost of yeah. her. And I'm sure like it was definitely embellished. I'm sure oh, yeah, liberties were taken. Hollywood dramatizes everything. They do. They do. Um, but yeah, super interesting. And actually, the mm-hmm. original movie. Starring, you know, James Brolin and Margot mm-hmm. Kidder as the Lutz family was actually filmed maybe 10 minutes from here, Which where we amazing. are. Which is amazing, and it's a great yes. movie. Mm-hmm. And the I'll tell you what. The exterior of the house was filmed here. And that it, window scene? Ooh. Yes. And, and it, mm-hmm. speaking of movies, for a little This Day in History segment, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho was released today in 1960. Mm. That is crazy, and I'll tell you what—I mm-hmm. I still haven't seen that fully. 
Oh, it's so good. I, I haven't either. To. No. Anthony Perkins, awesome. Oh, and uh, and Perkins delicious French toast, by the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I was gonna ask, by the way, like, was the configuration of the Lutz family in terms of like the wife and the kids, was it similar to that of the previous family that was murdered? Like, did they have, like, was it, like, the same makeup? Like, a daughter, a son, a father, a wife? No, this was, like, two little boys and a little girl. And the other family... It was the older brother, right? Was it the oldest brother that that wound up killing Butch? Butch, if a Butch was, like, how old was he when he killed them? Like... Um, I have it in my notes, actually. Uh, 23. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and, like, the oldest Lutz kid was only nine. Damn. Yeah, so, uh, when the youngest, uh... And actually, the youngest DeFeo child that died was nine. John was nine when he died. Really? Yes. And then Mark was 12, Allison was 13, and Dawn was 18. Oh, so they had a bunch of kids. Mm-hmm. Even more kids they did, them. yeah. Because yes. I was going to say, like, have you ever seen that? Where it's like the same configuration, moves in, and they get I would weird, be like, yeah, like it would be way too, mm-hmm. like, coincidental. I'm like, yeah. I don't like this. I'm not going to stay And there. what was the Lutz child that experienced most of the activity? Um, I couldn't see, but like I'm assuming uh, Daniel because he's the one that still stands by what his parents said or mm-hmm. claimed happened. And I rem- I remember watching that documentary that he made um, years ago now, um, and he claims some pretty crazy shit went mm-hmm. down there. So I don't know. It's pretty interesting though. Yeah. It's like. Mm. <sighs> It is beautiful though. I'll tell you what, because we I drive past it sometimes. They changed it so it doesn't they really did. look but like that house. And actually, one of the guys that used to work in corporate for our company lived in that house. Really, he really? had that house. I mean, yes. I, now that's like the movie prop. It's not like the it's, history house. No, well, like it was the exterior was filmed here, and I know some of the like the driving scene with like the priest and like the, when his, the, the hood of his car is going nuts and stuff like that, that was filmed here too. That was filmed right on Washington street. Mm. So like now where did the actual case take place again? Where was it? What um, state? Long Island. Yeah. Long, so it was Long still Island, New York, more specifically York. in Amityville, obviously. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, it was a very crazy. affluent area of New York. Yeah. And, like that is crazy. Cause I, I was always like mixed about it. I was like, is it, was it in New Jersey or was it in And it's probably here? even more affluent now because all the tourists. Oh, sure. From and I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know. I think, has there been like ghost hunter people that have well, gone there? Well, aren't there like Zach ghost hunters and everything there? Oh, I feel like we bring up poor Zach Baggins. Send him in. I'm, I'm possessed. He's actually our, one of our first listeners. So shouts out to Zach Baggins, big time, big time supporter of the show. Was he? Yes, no, he, he was. Yes, he was. Coffee yes, he and was. scream. Yeah, he's just he keeps asking. He's like, Jess, can I please like let me we on? We have to block him on Twitter. He wouldn't he's stop. He's like, come he on, Jess, like so let me much. just get on there. Let me act like I'm possessed. No, he's like, I like, just we tried. He can't fit through the doorway. He's so swole. His, his yeah, he's just <laughs> so jacked. He couldn't. And fit I say, Zach, you gotta turn sideways and like scoot in, and he just he won't listen. We're gonna have to retrofit this studio. I know, and yeah. to just to fit his. He guns. keeps asking, and I keep saying, you know, cool your heels, there, bud. <laughs> cool them out. Cool them out. Relax. Change, change your affliction T-shirt. Take yeah. a hike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Zach, I, I told you, take a walk. Take a haunted hike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take a walk. It, it, it's now, like, is there any like? Would you? I never. Does anybody even like ask that question? Like, are there any haunted like campgrounds or hiking trails? I'm sure there are. I, we never hear about Ooh, them. The it's always a building. Trail. It's always a haunted. Well, I want to talk or about the that Appalachian. one Appalachian. Yeah, we'll we'll make a whole other episode on it, but um, that one is I've never yeah. heard about that. Ooh, it is fucking that's haunted. crazy. There's people that like live on it. Like I don't want to give too much away, but um, like they always say like at nighttime you have to shut all your blinds and stuff like that. You can't let anything see you inside your house. I don't know. It's that's super mm-hmm. duper haunted. Um, that's insane. Yeah, well they got like gremlin level rules. About nighttime there. <laughs> I wish I had a little that gizmo was just so cute. Like, oh, I love gizmo. He's just They're so like, cute. The sun's going down. <laughs> Mod- Modwai. Oh my goodness. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So that was Amityville and the mm-hmm. haunting, you know, that inspired lots of movies and oh, lots yeah. of other things. And a very uh, rest in peace to the DeFeos. Yeah. Yeah. Not not Butch though. Not, <laughs> Take not an L. Butch. <laughs> yeah, get out of here, bozo. Yeah, <laughs> L bozo. <laughs> uh, 
Oh my goodness. So you guys, you can follow us on Twitter on C Scream Pod. Let's see the letter Scream Pod. Mm-hmm. On Instagram at Coffee and Scream Pod. Uh, make sure you pop in to Twitch every Tuesday night at eight for Wonder Time Theater. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Nice. Twitch.tv forward slash Wonder Time Theater. Do you want to also advertise your art account on Instagram? Um, art uh, Art of Chris V at Art of Chris V and um, at Chris V plays guitar. If you guys want to, you know, you guys like guitar and music and stuff. Thank you. I yes. appreciate that, yeah, guys. Of course. And also, I am. I'm if at it's just to... G on Twitter. And you're on Twitter too, aren't you? Uh, Not as much as I am. I'm yes, on there. Yes, I'm not going to give out my handle because I'm never on it, so I'll never respond to you guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, you can one. also but, email us at Coffee and Scream Podcast at yes. Gmail if you have any case suggestions or any hauntings mm-hmm. that you know you witnessed, and maybe we can do a call-in segment. Mm-hmm. That'd be great, and that wouldn't be too hard to set up, by the way. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. I'd um, give out my my personal Instagram, but my handle has my last name in it, so uh, we don't do last so names just, here. Yeah, so just yeah, just uh, just find her at Coffee and lots. Scream. Uh, <laughs> hunt it's Piper down, DeFeo. make you yeah, work Piper for it. Like hunt me down, work for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. I don't care if I'm it. It's Jess G. I just talk about random bullshit and. I make myself laugh. That's <laughs> that's the most important thing. Yes. Uh, I definitely tweet a lot. You do. I do. I, I, maybe I'll use it more. You should. Yeah. You know what you should. I see some of your tweets. I have tweets one tweet. And I'm like, Haha. And it's, I hope you laugh. Tweet. I'm like, hey, that's a little silly. Oh, yeah. she's so silly all the time. I'm ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there goes right, Jess guys. with her silly little tweets. Uh, oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, until next time, lock your doors and stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye.